Hey everyone, welcome to another Malts and Meeples. I'm Petter, and on today's Malts and Meeples we are going to be creating a lot of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition characters. This is for a one-shot that I'm going to be running this weekend. So, it has some, uh, so the game I'm going to be running it has new players in it, and I want to start it out pretty simply, and it's a one-shot. It's probably going to be more like a three-shot uh, kind of thing where we play in November, December, and January. And I want to level up the characters and give them kind of a progression as time goes by. So this is going to be really simple. We're going to be starting with level one characters. But I'm going to have uh, four people the first time and up to six playing with me in this game. So I want to create a number of characters for them. But before we hop into that, let's talk about today's uh, beer. We have Indeed's Mexican Honey Light Lager. So uh, Indeed does a Mexican Honey Lager Imperial that is quite good but often a bit much. This one is the lighter version of it and really quite good. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. It's just a has a little bit more sweetness, a little bit more depth and character than your standard lager, which is what I'm looking for in a lager. I'm normally an ale guy. So, when we're going through and creating all of these, let's take a quick look at everything that I have that could have stuff in it to use. This goes from the book that came out this past week to the original player's handbook. And everything in between, Eberron book, we're going to be mainly sticking to the player's handbook, simply because at first level, very few of the uh, classes get to make major decisions. Most of those come around third level, which is what I plan where I plan on jumping uh, or ending the campaign. But by that point in time, players will have had a chance to figure out what they want to play and kind of have an idea for that. Um, and the other thing to know when I'm doing this is uh, fairly often when I'm doing character creation I will use the 46 method for creating characters. However, I want to make sure everybody's nice and evenly balanced, so today I am going to be using the standard array. Also, don't be too shocked if for spellcasters I put some of the spell information here on the first page simply so the new players or anybody playing it doesn't have to search so hard to find what they want to do. Uh, let's jump in and start with our first character. And we have <coughs> all the different character and class options. And if we go in order, the first thing that we would create in terms of classes is a barbarian level one. But I'm just going to do one. And then we have to consider what race we want to use. I'm going to use a Mountain Dwarf. I could have gone half orc, but I feel like Mountain Dwarf provides enough that I want. Excuse me. Uh, this first couple will probably go through fairly slowly, but I have six players potentially. I'm going to create ten different characters. So let's uh, mark our spot back here with our classes, and let's look up the Mountain Dwarf. So I'll also apologize, I am definitely going to be looking away from the camera more often than normal. So they get two to con, and as Mountain Dwarf, they get 
two to strength as well. So uh, I don't really care that much about size. I care more or care more about uh, the stats. So I'm not going to fill out like age, height, weight, eyes. That's something that uh, as we play or as we pick out different characters to play, we can do that. So we have some feats and traits. We have dark vision of uh, 60 feet. So basically dwarves can see in low light up to 60 feet. We have dwarven resilience. which is basically advantage against advantage on poison saving throws and resistance to poison. Dwarves are just harder to take down. We have some weapons that are proficient with battle, axe, hand axe, light, Hammer, Warhammer, tool proficiency of, uh, let's go with Smith's tools. Stone cutting. Uh, stone cutting basically says Stone cutting proficient in history when it comes to stonework. Stone. It's the flavorful uh, thing that gets added on. As a dwarf, you know more about stone. Uh, languages, you know, common and dwarven. And as a mountain dwarf, we get plus, or we get a couple more proficiencies with light armor and medium armor. Not going to be super useful for us as a barbarian, but it certainly is an option and something that's pretty useful. So. As a Barbarian, we're going to want our strongest stats in Strength and Constitution. Normally. But I'm actually going to put the 15 here. The 14 there becomes a 16. Let's remember our numbers. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, we're not extremely smart. Uh, so a lot of people would do this the other way around than I do it. Uh, they would put the bigger number down in the smaller area. But I actually prefer it the other way around. No good reason, I just do. Plus three, plus two, plus two, minus one plus one, and zero. So we have all our skills set up here, and the reason we're doing that is just so we can get uh, the information filled in quickly. So our max hit points is going to be uh, our hit die, which is a d12, plus our constitution. So we start out with 14 hit points and one d12. There we have no temporary hit points. We don't have an armor class yet. Our proficiency bonus, since we're starting, is going to be a plus two. Our saving throws, which we know are both going to be uh, strength and constitution. So our strength saving throw is going to be a plus five. Plus two. Plus four. Minus one. I really wish this tabbed like I would want it to. Plus one.
and zero. Hopefully that zoomed in makes it a little bit easier to see. We know our initiative two, since it's dexterity based, is going to be a plus two. Background we'll come back to. Um, I'm actually going to leave the alignment blank. I'm going to probably leave... I'm going to fill in these a little bit, but uh, keep it somewhat generic so people, players can uh, pick what they want. We also get two skills we're proficient with. Athletics, Intimidation, Animal Handling, Perception, Survival. We'll go with Survival. So that is a plus three. This is a plus five because we're proficient with them. And one thing you'll notice is I'm not going to fill in every single one of these numbers for skills. That is just too many to fill in for as quickly as I'm trying to go to creating these characters. Let's see, we could add shields to that. We can actually just take this whole section and go with simple slash martial weapons. It makes it even neater, simpler that way. We have our equipment. We can start with a great axe or any martial melee weapon. Let's see if I have. Don't have that saved. more room over here. Well, let's look at our weaponry. Martial melee weapon. We can get a maul. Seems more dwarf-like. Um, two hand axes or two simple weapon or any simple weapon, we'll go with a, uh, we'll go with two X hand axes, and then we get an explorer's pack, four javelins, and that's our starting gear from the class. So let's quickly get these in place. Attack bonus is going to be six. It's going to be five. Hand axes is going to be plus five or plus four. And they do 1d6 plus three slash two. Simply uh, held or thrown. Our javelin, flip back here. Our javelin is going to be plus four, one D six. Plus two. It can be thrown as well. So now we get our abilities. So we have Rage. Um, rage lasts for one minute. And we have number of rages that is shown in the column. So we have two rage. How I like to denote that is two times per day. So the advantage is 
we have advantage on strength checks and saving throws. We have melee weapon does plus two damage. Resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. So two times and they last one minute. Next we have our unarmed defense, which is, since we don't have any armor, also I misspelled javelin, we get to use our unarmored defense, which is 10 plus dex plus con, which gives us a pretty nice one at 14. And that's it that we get for first level, but now we have our background. So what's the background for our Barbarian? Um, well, you're going to go with something a little bit off the wall. Galarzin. The reason for doing this, though, it gives us proficiencies in insight and persuasion. So plus two and a plus one. That's not an amazing use of it, but we gain a, a set of artisans tools. So. We're also good at calligraphy. Uh, let's do... I could look back here at the various tool sets somewhere. So tools, artisan's tools, we have smith's tools, but uh, I like calligraphy, calligrapher's tools. It, we get some more stuff for our equipment, and we have an additional language too. So let's do Numish. Additional equipment, we're going to have Smith's tools. some money. 15 gold pieces. You also always get a feature uh, that you can add. Guild membership cost 5 GP per month. But what it does is Guild members will provide you with food slash lodging. And will support you if you get accused of a crime. Yeah, so we have here a dwarf who's clearly um, my story in my head would be that they're good at what they do, but uh, in some ways 
it's too stationary for them. So while they're really good at making armor, or good at making armor, they want to go out and adventure more. Uh, let's find some personality traits. I'm rude to people who lack my commitment to hard work and fair play. Our ideals. Everyone should be free to pursue his or her own livelihood. So you'll notice that I haven't like assigned a name, anything like that. That's going to stay blank. Um, Like this idea, I did a great work for someone, but didn't find them worthy. I'm still waiting to find someone worthy. Whatever that might be. Flaws. I think that one ties in pretty well to the first one. Because they're going to assume that they're going to be getting cheated out of everything. Even if it's not the case. Uh, we've got our press of perception. Our perception is going to be our wisdom score. One plus 10, so we have a passive perception of 11. Basically, it's just kind of how hard it is for people to sneak up on you. How aware you are of your surroundings. One down. Desktop, I created. We're going to name this Corbin. Barbarian. Makes it really easy to know. So we have him. Close that down. Let's verify that we actually had something to save here. One of three. Have our door in Barbarian. Open up the sheet. And let's go on to our next character. Next character we're going to do is we're going to have a bard. And we're going to do a uh, gnomish bard. The, so gnomish bard is actually not an ideal bard build. Uh, because they don't get a boost to charisma. We're going to have a forest gnome bard. So we get to have a plus one boost to dex and plus two to intelligence. Um, our walking speed, again, is slow, 25 feet. What else do we have? Dark vision. You'll see this show up quite often. 60 feet. Known cunning. Advantage on int. Wiz char against magic. 
So we have advantage on saving throws. Uh, I should say that. There we are. We know uh, two languages, common and gnomish. No real surprise there. And let's actually use the sheet. So we have a cantrip that we automatically get, which is minor illusion plus we then also get speak with small beasts through sounds and gestures you can communicate simple ideas um, to smaller smaller beasts Forest domes, love animals, and often keep squirrels, badgers, rabbits, moles, woodpeckers, or other creatures as pets. You can communicate simple ideas to small animals through sounds and gestures. So there we have our start. Let's flip over here now to our bard. So, as a bard, we're, we have uh, charisma is, should be our best stat. For the quick build idea, that's what they suggest. That's what I would do as well. So we're going to put a 15 in there, which is only a plus 2. They say dex next, so we're actually going to switch stuff up. We're going to be a fast bard. And then put our 14 there. 13... And Wisdom, which is a plus one. Twelve, and Intelligence, which becomes a fourteen for a plus two. So we're fairly smart in terms of being a bard. We're gonna do a ten here, simply so we can keep a zero there. We're gonna have our eight in Strength, which makes sense. We're a gnome, we're small, we're a bard. Our hit points are 1d8. We don't get any addition from our plus zero on con. So we're just at eight. And we'll do d8 there. Um, we do get some weapon and armor proficiencies. Light armor. Simple weapons. Hand crossbows. See what else? Long swords, rapiers, and short swords. We're also proficient with three musical instruments. So we're gonna have the flute, drum, and horn. Very it's out there our instruments for them. We are our saving throws are, uh, where are we? Dexterity and Charisma. So that's actually great because those are two of our best stats. So plus uh, four there, since our proficiency bonus is plus two. Plus five there. Minus one, zero, plus two, and a plus one. So pretty solid. We get three skills of our choice. So I think performance is a bard, 
perception and nature. Let's just go with those three right there. So plus four, plus three, and a plus four. The reason for going with those three is I think with the ability to speak to animals, could have done animal handling, but I, it's a, the gnome is in touch with all of nature. Perception, just aware of the, everything, aware of the room, aware of playing off the room, and performance is the ability to play for the right crowd. Uh, we have our equipment. We can choose from a rapier, a long sword, or any simple weapon. I think we have a short sword. Uh, entertainers pack for sure. Lute or any other musical instrument. I think we have a flute. And then a leather armor and a dagger. So with a short sword, if I'm not mistaken, short sword is in fact short sword is a finesse weapon. So we can attack using our dexterity, which is plus five. So we have a 1d6 plus three damage. Then we have a dagger, which is also dexterity, but it's 1d4 plus three damage, which isn't too bad. Then let's actually look up, since we have armor now, We have leather armor, which is just 11 plus your dexterity modifier. So 11 plus 3, 14. Just as armored as our barbarian who's wearing no armor. Sounds about right. So we have our spells and spells known and spell slots and spell casting ability. We're going to hold off on that and do Bardic Inspiration first, which is the other thing we get out of it. And so, basically, you can inspire others through words, music, dance. Um, you can use your bonus action on a creature within 60 feet, other than yourself, who can hear you. That creature gains Bardic Inspiration, a d6. Next 10 minutes, they can roll it and add it to an attack, saving throw, ability check, anything like that. You can only have one at a time and equal to your charisma modifier. So, two X D six. And if I'm not mistaken, this refreshes on, we'll do and then refreshes on a long rest, given the ally within 60 feet, I can hear you, a d6, let's see. Bonus action, they can use that in the next 10 minutes to boost an attack, ability check, or saving throw. Now our spell casting. So we have our cantrips, which we know two, in addition to minor illusion. We have four spells known, which doesn't count for that. We have two total first level spell slots. Our spell casting ability is Charisma. So our save DC is going to be eight plus proficiency plus Charisma. Our proficiency bonus is two, Charisma bonus is two plus eight is 12, and our spell attack is going to be proficiency plus charisma, which is plus 4. So now let's go and find our spells. 
first level of Bard. Let's find the Bard spell list back here. Bard spell list, we have our cantrips, which, like I said, we get to know two more. Um, let's do light. And let's do mage hand. We're not necessarily uh, the most combative uh, bard at this point. We know four spells, or we have four spells known every day. Um, the bard is one of those classes that can swap out their spells completely uh, for their spells known. Uh, let's see, though. Keeping on theme, we should have animal friendship. We do need some sort of uh, fighting spell, so thunder wave. Cure wounds. And let's do fairy fire for the last one. So cure wounds, obviously, cure some wounds. Thunder wave does a kind of cone of damage out from them. And fairy fire, um, any creature in the area who fails a saving throw against it is wreathed in light. And they're no longer invisible if they were invisible. So that really allows uh, other characters to attack with advantage. Um, so this is very much a support type of bard build. Now we have to find our background. In here somewhere. Background is pretty easy. We're going to go with entertainer. Personality trait. Uh, let's do this with I know a story relevant to almost any situation. Pretty simple one. Art should reflect the soul. It should come from within to reveal who we really are. Bonds. Idolize the hero of the old tales and measure my deeds against theirs. So we're really trying to live up to some sort of ideal. I really like this one for a flaw. I once satirized a novel who still wants my head. It was a mistake that I will likely repeat. So there we are. We'll save this for our Gnomish Bard. Two down in 40 minutes. Oh boy. It's taking a little bit. Let's see if we can continue. 
Let's do a cleric next. Clerics are wisdom based. Let's just go with the human cleric. And in case you can't tell, I'm kind of going through the different uh, classes alphabetically. Human clerics, humans get plus one to every single stat. They don't get any special features though, so they don't have dark vision, they don't have stone cunning, they don't have anything, they can't talk to animals, anything like that. Um, four, 16, 15, so that's the uh, 15, 14, hold on, let's find our standard array again. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. That's going to be our 9. 15 is 14. So 13 because of 14. 12, 13. 10, it's an 11. So we're here at plus 2. Plus 2. Plus 1. Zero plus three and minus one for our charisma. And you can read and write common and another language. Let's do Elfin. And that's it for the human part of it. Let's look at our cleric. Uh, and cleric is unique. Uh, there are a couple of classes, so cleric and wizard for two of them, that get kind of a path right off the bat. So not only are we a cleric, but we're going to have more going on with that. We start out with nine hit points. Um, we can do our initiative, which is a plus two. No temporary hit points, but we have a D8 hit die. Speed, forgot to do that, it's 30 feet. As a cleric, we have some proficiencies to go through. Uh, light armor. Medium armor, shields, simple weapons. We have a couple of skills. We're gonna do more of a healer type cleric, I think. So medicine and religion are both great options there. Uh, medicine is wisdom based, so that's great. Religion is intelligence based, so that's Fine, not bad. Sorry, I forgot to zoom in. Probably forget that every single time. Uh, and do it halfway through. Our saving throws are wisdom and charisma, which isn't bad because that took care of our negative save. So we, we don't necessarily have a couple of higher saves, but we don't have one negative save, which is key. And there aren't a lot of things, honestly, that have you do a charisma save, much more wisdom. So having a plus five and a wisdom save is really good. So we can either have a mace or warhammer for proficient with the warhammer. We're gonna have a mace. Scale mail, leather armor, or chainmail, if proficient. We're gonna do leather armor. Now we know our armor class is gonna be 13, because if we remember, it was 11 plus our dexterity modifier for leather armor, so 11 plus two. And even though we're proficient with it, we don't get to add any additional bonus. If we were wearing leather armor and not proficient with leather armor, the leather armor wouldn't 
help us at all and would give us that plus 11. Um, we can have a light crossbow with 20 bolts or a simple weapon. Uh, let's do a simple weapon. Let's have a dagger. Keep it very simple here. We have our priest's pack. We have a shield and a holy symbol. Now, if we flip back here, I want to double check one thing. A mace. 1d6 damage. But we have a shield. So shield gives us plus 2 to AC if we're using it. And we're going to assume that we're going to use it. So for our mace, we use our strength to attack. So it's plus 4. And that's 1d6 plus 2. For a dagger, we use our dexterity to attack, which is also a plus 2. So it is 1d4 plus 2. And we'll do a... So we know that we can throw the dagger as well. Oh, and I think I forgot to put down... No, I did put down the holy symbol, excellent. So divine domain, we can choose one domain out of knowledge, life, light, uh, nature, tempest, trickery, or war. We're going to do a life domain cleric, which gives us bless and cure wounds. We're also proficient now with uh, heavy armor as well. So we could use, if we wanted, uh, that chainmail, which would probably bump up our AC slightly higher, but I think that we want to be more mobile on the battlefield versus an attacking uh, character. sneeze here in a second. <coughs> As a disciple of life, we get our first ability, our trait, feature. Healing spells are more effective when you use a spell of first level or higher to restore hit points to a creature. That creature gains an additional 2 plus the spell's level. Potent. When you cast a healing spell of level one or higher, it heals for two plus spells level additional points. So that's pretty nice, actually. And let's look at our spell casting here. We have our cantrips. Choose from our cleric spell list. Choose a number of cleric spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level. So our wisdom modifier is 3 plus our cleric level, which is uh, 1. So we know 4 spells and 3 cantrips. And we have two first spell, level spell slots. So let's quickly hop down here. We have our cleric. Spell casting is wisdom. Spell save is going to be proficiency plus wisdom plus eight, which is going to be 13, since we have a plus three. So from our known spells, we can choose if we want Bless and Cure Wounds, which I want. Another support type character. Then we can flip back here to where we have our Cleric spell list. Doesn't fit the best on me. So we know three cantrips will cast Guidance, which basically helps uh, 
on ability checks, things like that. Um, resistance. And... Spare the Dying. We always want to have one sort of... Uh, Probably a tax spell of some sort. Which I think would be guiding Volt for our cleric. Guiding Bolt. Yeah. F on a hit, takes 46 radiant damage. And the next attack against them has advantage. So it's even still kind of support. And then, final one. We'll do healing word. Now we have to hit up our background. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, with our entertainer, I don't know, maybe we went through everything. We're gonna go with the acolyte background. Um, I see omens in every event in action. The gods try to speak with us. We just need to listen. Our ideals. traditions of my faith must be upheld and practiced. Slightly different wording than it has in the book. It, that just says the ancient traditions of worship and sacrifice must be preserved and upheld. Uh, basically the same thing, just cleaner wording. would die to recover an ancient relic that was long lost. It's a good plot hook too. A lot of these are not particularly ideal for a one shot, like that bond is not going to come up in a one shot. But if somebody wants to continue playing this character into another game, or like back this character down to first level, it's certainly something they can do. And my flaws, my piety, sometimes leads me to blindly trust those who Profess faith in my God. I really should have started doing these earlier. We are at almost an hour. Whew. And we, this is number three. Some of it is I just don't have great enough room to <laughs> have everything laid out that I'd want. 
I might switch it up here in a second uh, and demonstrate another way that you can create a character. This limits how much I can do, but it's going to make it faster. Um, so that's there. Let's find out what we get. We get insight and religion. Uh, since we already have uh, religion, we can pick whatever we want. I'm going to go history. We're very historically, men medicinally focused. I really think I forgot to do this on the entertainer. Um, we have a holy symbol, already mentioned. A prayer book. The or prayer wheel. Five sticks of incense. Vestments, common clothes, and 15 gold pieces. So we're going to save this character here. And we have our human cleric. We're going to go back and fix the bard, since I guarantee you I forgot some of the stuff for the bard, which I'm sure they would like to have considering we're a little bit short on gear and money. Uh, we have the trait by popular demand. Ends will give you food and rest if you agree to perform. That's what it is. Very simple in terms of money. We have 15 gold pieces. Most of these do. We have proficiency with acrobatics and performance. We already have performance. Uh, that's a plus three, so we have plus five there. And so we can do another one. We'll do persuasion. It's plus four there. So we're good at talking and noticing things. Our gear. And let's, we get more proficiencies. Tambourine. And disguise kit. So we get some stuff here. Musical instrument of our choice. We're gonna have a horn to go with it. Uh, favor from an admirer. Costume. And a pouch with 15 gold pieces. What we don't have is a disguise kit, even though we are proficient. With it. And then, so we can save this. Close that out. And I forgot to do one thing for the acolyte which is our shelter of faith trait or feature. Basically what this means is that uh, we command like uh, healing at a ter and care at a temple, shrine, or establishment of your faith. Healing and care for you and the party at an establishment of your faith. Simple. Say over the top of that good. But what I want to do instead now is show you another way to do this. Since, like I said, this is taking a little bit of time, we can go to D&D Beyond. Now, this is limited to how much you can do. So as I sign in, I think it's with Twitch. Authorize. Yep, I can go to my creations, 
uh, characters. And I've created previously some random uh, characters. But I can now click create a character. Standard. Standard way. I'm going to just create, leave that empty. Should allow me to leave it empty. I can pick a race. I can only pick what's known as the OSR races or the uh, free to use races. So I can choose two of these, so if I'm going next, it's Druid, which I believe is Wisdom, and let's give ourselves a plus one in Dexterity. Skill Versatility, we get to be proficient with two skills. Let's do Survival and Nature, and we get to add a language of a, ch a choice. So let's do Dwarvish. Our class, we're gonna do Druid. Now, this is going to limit the number of like choices we can make. We get to choose two of these for our, uh, uh, let's do animal handling. What we can do is a druid, spell casting, spell rules, spell list. We can choose any spell we want. We can choose what method we want for this. Put that there. Let's do this. Make us really good at kind of our two top skills, but then let's make us bad at, uh, let's actually switch this to a 10. Let's make us not that healthy. So we're going to have a negative one in our con, which is bad. Character name. We can choose our background. We're limited on what backgrounds we can have. Let's do folk hero. Uh, let's do insight. Skill here. Let's do perception. Tool proficiency. We have a ton of different options. Here, let's do Brewers. We have a whole bunch of other things we can choose. We can choose an alignment. We're gonna leave that blank. Lifestyle, physical characteristics, personal characteristics, notes, stuff like that. Starting equipment, so we can choose from here either a wood shield or a simple weapon. We'll do a wood shield. We can have a druidic focus. Let's do a sprig of mistletoe. Folk hero gives us some starting equipment. Let's do brewer supplies. We're gonna have a whole bunch of brewers here. And then we can advance. And then view the character sheet. And we have a character sheet here for a hero with no name. Fills in all these numbers for us. Equipment. We should manage our equipment. Or, uh, we can wear things. So we now have our basic equipment set up, spells, 13, so we can manage spells. We have known spells, we can know two cantrips, and so what cantrips do we want? Do a mold earth and 
clearly. And then we can prepare for first level spells. So let's do... Um, beast bond, animal friendship, speak with animals, and thunder wave. Now, if I share this, or I'm hoping there's some way that I can get a nice printable version of this. I don't really remember, but now we can see that I have a character, I can click on them, share it, What happens if I do control T? I'm hoping, and it did, of course. I want to export this in a way that is printable. So maybe this isn't as ideal as I had thought. Really? There is no printable version of this. How is that possible? There has to be export sheet. So I open this up. Hey, I now have basically the exact same sheet just in a slightly different order for this character. You know what? I think I like this sheet better. I'm curious, if I look at my spell list, It really gives me every single spell as an option there, huh? Fun. So, we can go back here. We have this one downloaded in my downloads. Now let's make sure we get in the right spot. No idea what this is. Uh, let's just delete it. This should have, I think, our newest version of the cleric, which is, yep, is the shelter of faith. And then, so going back here. I have one of six slots used. I can create another character. Standard character. So we're only at an hour and eight now. Let's delete this. Advance. Next up, we would have a fighter. So let's do a half orc fighter. Dark vision, menacing, relentless endurance. So if I go higher levels using D&D Beyond, it limits what I can go into. We have two proficiencies, athletics and survival, fighting style, let's do great weapon fighting style, yeah. Which allows you to reroll uh, some damage. We're going to want to focus on our two most important stats, get 16s in them both. We're going to be pretty slow, pretty dumb, fairly charismatic, and fairly wise. We're more like street smart than anything else. We're going to take the soldier background, that's what we were before this. So we know some history, and... 
yeah, let's know some stealth. We have a gaming set that we're proficient with. Nothing all that exciting. So when we choose this, we can choose either chainmail or leather armor. This for sure. Two martial weapons. I want a great axe. Great sword. Two hand axes. Explorer's pack. Add the any equipment. And then we can equip, 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 equip. And next. So we we can export the character sheet. Let's do that right now. But then let's view the character sheet in here. Viewing the character sheet in D&D Beyond is just a little bit simpler. We have 16 for our armor class, which is nice. And our great axe does 1d12 plus 3, and our great sword does 2d6 plus 3. So you're like, okay, those are basically the same thing. Technically, the great axe has a better chance of it's confusing, but basically like, the range for the great sword is going to tend to be more towards the middle numbers. Great axe has a higher chance of going higher. No spells for this, so let's take, let's cut it instead of uh, copying it. And then let's cut this one instead of copying it. There we are. So good armor class, good to hits. Yeah. Pretty nice stats all around for this character. So when I finish this up, I'm going to use up all six of the slots. I can then delete if I want, but I'll probably just stop at nine. Nine should be good to start. Continue forward. We have all these different things. Let's do, I forget which one's up next. Let's make him a light foot happling. So plus two for dex. And they get to be lucky. As well as charisma increases by one. So, some pretty nice stats here. After fighter comes to monk. So actually this is a really good setup. Because monks... Let's do painter supplies are all about being athletic. They have this unarmored defense where they want good dex and good wisdom. So we have good dex here to our standard array. That our 14 to get it up to 16. We'll do our wisdom as the 15. Uh, charisma will be 13. Strength, let's do intelligence as an eight. 12 for con and 10. Our backgrounds, let's do, let's do criminal and spy. Criminal contacts, we get deception and stealth. Good combos here. We're going to either take a short sword or any simple weapon. We can do any simple weapon because we have a whole bunch of kind of fun ones in here to choose from. Let's do boomerang. That's insane. Uh, let's let's have a let's do dagger. Explorer's pack. Add the starting equipment. Let's equip and equip. No armor. We 
but we're still going to have a decent armor class of 15 because our dexterity and our wisdom are what are bumping that. We have a couple of thrown things that are nice. We can also use the dagger up close. But the big thing is we have our martial arts. So we're going to be doing a lot of unarmed strikes. So then we go continue here. And let's get this exported. Seen them? So I'm trying to think what would have been between Monk and Fighter. I can't come up with any class. So I'm assuming we're hitting everything pretty well here. Um, let's do a tiefling. Tiefling for the next one. If I'm not mistaken, the next one down the line is a paladin. Paladins cast based off of charisma and are what known as half casters. So they don't get cantrips and they don't necessarily get spells right away. Let's do intimidation and athletics. We're very much going for a uh, fighting a fighting character here. Not that wise, not that intelligent, but we're about trying to hit hard. Let's have a haunted one background. So this is actually from uh, um, Curse of Strahd, but the background is available to use. Let's do a martial weapon and a shield. I think just a long sword. Five javelins, yeah. Priests or explorers, I'm definitely doing explorers. Uh, we'll have an amulet. We have a Monsters Hunters pack, as well as our Explorers pack. So we can add that, go into our inventory here, and get our equipment set up. So we're going to have good armor class. So we look at our character sheet here. While well, that's loading, let me move this over. You can see how this is much, much faster. However, this is really limiting uh, because I'm not paying for it. I'm just using what is free out there. If I was paying for it, then I would have a ton more options. Like I said, I showed you all those books. I have even other books that don't necessarily have character options in them. So, plus two to strength and dex, plus one to con. So we have 11 hit points, 18 armor class. Pretty good looking setup there. Javelins, okay, whatever. But uh, our longsword, it's good. Our arm strike. And we have some other fun features like lay on hands that allows us to spend, uh, basically have a pool to heal people. Mm. <laughs> and some of the advantage of using this sheet too is I'm pretty sure on the exports that we're getting some extra information that isn't on the basic sheets, which is going to be good for people who are learning how to play. So if we go back to my characters, I'm going to create yet another character. And there are more complex ways to do this, but let's do an elf. Let's do high elf here. Dexterity. So 
So we have dark vision, we get a cantrip of our choice. Uh, let's do... We're a high elf, we're not... Let's do message. An ex extra language of our choice. Let's do halfling. We're a little bit more hoity-toity. Let's actually skip all the way down to wizard. Two things we're proficient at were definitely arcana and history. That's all we're doing is spending time learning that. We're going to want intelligence to be our highest score, which we get a plus one racial bonus, which is great, because that turns that 15 into a 16. Pretty good. So we're going to be very fast and very intelligent, just neutral there, not strong. We'll advance there. Background, we're going to be a sage. Like we, we think a lot. We like to investigate, probably religion as well. A couple additional languages, gnomish and dwarvish. And we have our starting equipment. We can choose either a quarterstaff or a dagger. Dagger, component pouch, or arcane focus. Arcane focus. We're gonna have a wand. Classic scholar's pack, spell book. Add all of this equipment here. And then we can equip what is able to be equipped. Which isn't that much. So we view the character sheet here. One thing that you're gonna notice quickly is our armor class is really bad. When you're not wearing armor, like we're not, and our hit points are 6, because wizards are the one class that has a d6 for their hit die, but when you're not wearing armor, ooh, you take your 10 plus dexterity, which is always going to be lower than any armor out there. Kind of sucks for our high, high elf here. Won't lie. But we do have some nice stats with our intelligence being so high. That means if we look at our spells here, Spell save DC is 13, about as high as you're going to get to start. Ah, crap. Forgot to do this. Manage spells. Add spells. So cantrips, we know three of them. Let's do dancing lights. Poison spray. And ray of frost. Then first level spells, let's do Featherfall, Shield is a must, Thunder Wave, we, and Magic Missile, and we can actually even have a few more of this because as a wizard, if you put the spell into your spell book, you have it. Spells at the first level. Now we need to go back and export this again. So we go here. Let's trash this one. And copy this new one over. So if you look down, we have uh, eight different characters, let's do one more quick and then call it good for the night. And so we can pick, we have a few different classes that we haven't done before. We're using the step-by-step -step approach. Uh, 
makes it easier. Hmm. Let's do a Dragonborn. We haven't done a Dragonborn yet. Draconic Ancestry. We can choose one of these. It gives us kind of this ability uh, for an attack. Let's do Let's do Bronze. I don't know why they just didn't let us pick. We can do Warlock, Sorcerer, Rogue, or Ranger. Let's do a Rogue. We don't have any of those. We're proficient in a bunch of different skills. We're going very roguelike in these. Uh, and we get to be experts in a couple of them. Which means we're going to be really good at them. Of course, we get our bonuses in weird spots. But let's... We're going to be a strong... Um, strong, but not that bright character. Criminal background. So we're going with uh, definitely that uh, questionable character here. We'll equip what we have. Do I not have any armor? I have leather armor. So we view the character sheet here. We don't get any spells for this. We get our sneak attack, but our goal is to be in and out. And that's what we want to do. We want to try and avoid any sort of attacks coming our way. So, we have this massive, massive uh, character sheet. Let's export this one. Get it moved to the right folder. And there we have it. We have nine different characters for six players to choose from. And we're only having four of them show up this first time. So we have plenty of options. Uh, clearly massively different sized files because these aren't editable. So if I open this up. I can't then go and, wait, I can, that's funny, oof, I'm not sure how well this is going to print though, because if you look at this, I'm going to have to come in and probably clean this up a little bit. So we have our actions. Why don't I pull the bonus actions and stick them over there? Kind of like down here. We have our Lightfoot Halfling stuff. But this actually goes three wide. It's really stupid that they don't form it better. But I'm just going to have to go through for each of these sheets quickly and fix them up. So you can use them better. But what we've done here is we've created nine different characters in an hour and a half, which is insanely fast. Um, when I do this normally at a table, I plan two, maybe three hours as part of a session zero, like before the game even starts, for just creating characters, um, discussing what the game's going to be, stuff like that. Needless to say, my beer is long gone at this point, so I'm not even going to pretend to drink from it. But, uh, yeah, I have to wrap up now. Uh, thank you for watching. Bottoms up. 
and I will see you next time.